Aloha and welcome to Knitted Paradise, where the needles are clicking and the yarn is squishy. My name is Lucia. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Pearl of the Pacific, and you can find the podcast on my website, YouTube, and Ravelry as Knitted Paradise. And my website is pearlofthepacific.info, if you were wondering. Yeah, welcome to episode 49. Today's November 19th. It's a Wednesday. I know I'm a little late. I just had a lot of stuff going on this weekend. And yeah, so today I was actually home sick because I wasn't feeling super well. I'm feeling a little better now. My husband has a cold, so I've been trying to not get it by rest and, um, you know, taking lots of vitamin C and everything. So Hopefully I've avoided that. So my boss is awesome and let me work from home today. So that was nice. And uh, so I got to do some sleeping and resting and a little bit of knitting and a lot of work because I was working. So, but I had this little window of time before um, we head off to the opera tonight. And uh, yeah, so I thought I'd record. Let's see, what do we got? Below the conch shell, we have the informal swap yarn knit along going on. And uh, yeah, I finally mailed my swap package. Yay, me! I'm only a month late. Anyway, I finally got the yarn. I got to um, see my friend who is the yarn dyer this weekend. She came over for some game night shenanigans with her and her fiance and so we had fun with that so I got my own hand delivered so you'll see some of that later I got one as a swap prize or swap one for my swap partner one as a prize and which is already those have both been mailed out to the appropriate people and one for me because I'm like well why I'm customing ordering yarn and I want some for me too <laughs> so yeah that was fun um the sweater knit along is also going on for Save the Children, and I've been working on my husband's sweater, and I haven't gotten to the, the mini sweater garland yet. As you can see in the background, I decided to just put some yarn up on a string. I figured out an interesting way to hold it up, but it's working for now. So eventually I'll have little knitted items, but for now at least there's something in the background, rather than just the fireplace. It's just the lighting is best and that I happen to have a fireplace on the side of the house, so that's where it works. Anyway, um, the other thing upcoming is the accessories knit along for December. And uh, yeah, so those are the two things. Oh, for the sweater knit along, I did put a finished object thread in Ravelry. And um, the prizes for that will be a $50 gift certificate to Webs. And then two people will get a copy of either my hat or my mitt pattern that's coming out soon. So, A for that. And then the, the accessories and along the prize is a skein of silver spun, which I showed, I think, last week. It was the week before, I can't remember. Ooh, my husband's coming home. Hold on a second. Okay, where were we? Uh, on the island, I have two things, really. I have my artichoke socks by Megan Humphrey out of Cascade Heritage. And I'm just doing the pattern up the front. I decided not to do it on the back, just for simplicity's sake. So these are coming along. They're really quick to knit, um, which is nice. And these were a custom order for a friend of mine. And ta-da! So hopefully those will be done this week. And yeah. The other thing I have is the sweater for my husband, which is the Grant Park Grant Park Pullover by Sel yeah, Selena Lee. And I'm doing it out of Leading Men Fiber Arts Dramaturg in the Darkest Hour colorway. And this is what I have so far. It is quite dark. It is mostly black. So, yeah. So it's got this nice like diamond argyle thing on the front. So I've just started that. You can barely see it because it's black. And then there's ribbing on the back. So ta-da. Not very exciting, but that's where I'm at. And 
That's it for on the needles. I know, real exciting. I had two things set sail this week. I finished test knitting my own hat pattern and my own fingerless mitts pattern. And this time I did them out of Malabrigo Rios in the Indocita colorway, which is like muted teals and purples and amazingness. So those are the two things I finished. I'm just showing you the yarn. Uh, the test knitters for my hat is are all done and they had some good feedback, so I'm incorporating that. And the fingerless mitts <sighs> testers are coming along and so that'll be awesome. They were both really quick to knit. I knit my hat in a day and I knit each fingerless mitt in a day. Um, so that was pretty nice to see how quick I could knit them. I tried to stay just ahead of the test knitters because I caught a few things on the hat. Okay, a lot of things on the hat as I was knitting through it. I wrote that pattern up a little quicker than I did with the fingerless mitts, so I caught a few more things that were wrong, so I had to fix those. And So it should be all smooth sailing, <laughs> but that was kind of intense. It's like, oh, maybe I should test knit my own hat and fix the pattern before I send it out. So it was mostly all right. There was just some wording and things that, like, I had put in an extra, you know, knit three rows. I was like, that doesn't need to be there. And then the way the decreases worked, I had to. Anyway, I won't go too far into that. But that's what happened as far as completing, completed knitting this week. Um, I did get some things from the mainland, as I said. I got a skein of... Another crafty girl for my friend Sarah in the Ponky Brewster colorway. And it is lovely. And the colors are pretty accurate. It's some, another like muted jewel tones. So that was pretty awesome. I don't know what it's going to be. I've just always wanted to try this colorway. So if you haven't checked out another crafty girl, you totally should. It's a, she's on Etsy. If you just search another crafty girl, you'll find her. And her stuff and her colors are amazing. And the cat is trying to get out the front door if you're wondering what he's meowing. <laughs> Pan, no, you can't go out the front door. Sad, sad kitty. He did get seven teeth pulled this week, which was a little intense. <laughs> the poor cat. Even the vet felt bad for him. I mentioned last week, I think, that I said he was going in to get some teeth pulled, and they thought mm, one, two, maybe three. No, he had to get seven pulled, so he's been on some painkillers and some antibiotics, which was pretty fun, but he's all right. <laughs> he's feeling better now because his mouth's not in pain, so that's good. The other thing I got from the mainland was, well, I didn't get it this week. I'm just opening this week was my swap package. And I haven't opened it yet. I just, I mean, I opened the box. I haven't unwrapped any of the things. But it came with this gorgeous card with this peacock on it. So thank you to my swap partner. And let's start with whatever this is. I resisted. I resisted this long. She actually got it to me on the deadline by... November 1st, and I've been resisting because I wanted to wait till I at least sent out my package. Ooh, I got a Lavish Shea lotion bar in what looks like a pear scent. Ooh, let me open this. I'll have to open it later. Oh, maybe that's it. Ha ha. I outsmarted it. Ooh, that smells lovely. Ooh, thank you. Let's see what else I got. Oh, yeah. Ooh. These are awesome. So I got some stitch markers, some different sets of stitch markers. And from the note, she said that the ones with the roses on it glow in the dark which sounds amazing. I love things that glow in the dark. These that glow in the dark. I don't know, one of them glows in the dark. I think these are the ones. Got little roses on them. I can't wait to try them out. 
I love things that glow in the dark. So I'm really excited about these. And so thank you. And let's see what this is. Oh, these are the edible goodies. I got some, ooh, gluten-free dark chocolate. Love me some dark chocolate. This looks like uh, an apple and peach. Oh, apple apricot. And this oh, oh, looks amazing. Gluten-free rice milk chunk. Wow. These are amazing. I know this company, the Enjoy Life company. They make my favorite cookies, but I've never seen these. So apparently they have them where you are and not where I am. Because those are amazing. And then this one has an apple and a pear in it. I'm gonna have to eat those like today. On the way down to the opera. And I also got a pen. Kid you not. From the local yarn store that she said she got the yarn from that dyes it up. So here's the yarn. Ooh. That's pretty. These are totally my colors. So, oh, let's get that right side up. Kid you not. Crystal blue percussion. Very pretty. Thank you. I'll enjoy that. Very nice. So that's what I got from the mainland. I know it's a pretty short podcast. Uh... The one thing I wanted to talk about, um, since I try to do something in my flora and fauna section, is that I wanted to talk about this little garment thing here that I have. And this is the Shawl Collared Cowl by Alana Dacos. And you wear it like this. And you button it up. And it is super toasty. It doesn't work very well with a cowl neck sweater dress thing, but whatever. But I have been wearing this lately because it has been freezing here. And it's very warm and cozy and very simple to knit. And I wanted to talk about it because this is like the second thing that I knit. Once I, I took this long hiatus, I learned to knit from my grandmother like years and years ago. And then I took this long hiatus, and then when I moved here, I thought, oh, it's winter. I should knit myself some things, like like hat and, you know, warm things. Anyway, um, I started listening to her podcast. I think that was the first knitting podcast that I ever listened to, which was Never Not Knitting, which if you haven't listened to that, you should. It's amazing. Um, she's really adorable, and I love her podcast. And she always has great knitting stories. In the beginning, it was her knitting stories, and now she's started collecting stories from other people. So they're always really funny or really inspiring, or they're great. You should just go listen to it. It's called Never Not Knitting. And that kind of inspired me to do a lot of knitting. And um, so she was having a sale for some of her patterns or something like that. I forget. Anyway, and this was on the list. And I thought, oh, that looks very useful for living in Chicago. So I bought the pattern and I bought this gorgeous yarn. And I thought, sweet, I'll do it out of that. Well, I wasn't, I'm going to take this off because it's kind of fun. But because I was a newer knitter, I didn't really understand like gauge and drape and things like that. And so I hadn't really thought that through and so I started knitting it out of this yarn that I bought and out of the needle size it said and it just wasn't working it was really dense and really hard to knit and it hurt my hands and I thought you know this is ridiculous so I put it down and I I think I knit some other things and then I went back to this and I ended up doubling up some yarn it's I ended up using um Morocco Ultra Alpaca, and I doubled it, and I knit it out of, like, I think on tens or something. It's really loose, 
and that gave me much more of like the drape. You can see that there's a lot of drape. And it's still very warm and it's not super airy. I mean, it's still pretty dense, but it worked much better than my original plan. And so I just wanted to share that one of my learning experiences as a newer knitter was, you know, trying this project and, you know, knitting it. I don't even know how far I got before I was like, this is ridiculous. I'm like, this is not the way I want it to look. And it wasn't, it wasn't going to fit right and drape right anyway. But there is something to be said about yarn and project combinations and that some just don't work no matter how hard you want them to. And I think it was Spud and Chloe Outer, which I still have. I still love the yarn. It has nothing to do with the yarn, but it just, it was too thick for this project. And so I went back and I think she knit hers out of like Blue Sky Alpaca, something, another alpaca something. And so I thought, you know what, if she used alpaca, I'm going to use alpaca. And I, and I somehow thought of doubling the yarn. I don't, remember anything except that I had tried to knit this out of my Spud and Chloe outer and it was not going well. And I don't even remember. I think I found these buttons somewhere. I don't even think I bought them. I think I found them in the storage unit in the place we moved into. Someone left a bunch of stuff including a ton of sewing things and included in that was a bunch of buttons and I think that's where I found these gorgeous gigantic buttons which work perfectly on this thing. So this is what it looks like if you hold it up entirely. It's knit this way and this is done in short rows if you wanted to know. And it's a very simple garment and very easy to knit. It just you have to have the right yarn and the right gauge. So I guess my point is gauge is very important. And uh, so pay attention to gauge. <laughs> Uh, but I know you guys at some point had asked about what podcasts I listen to. So that's one of the ones that I listen to religiously. She doesn't podcast very frequently, um, but when she does, it's always one of the first on my list to listen to. So that's all I really have for this week. I know it's going to be a super short episode, um, but I hope you enjoy. And uh, hopefully I'll have another one this weekend. I I think I'll have time to do my normal Sunday recording. Um, this Sunday just wasn't going to happen. <laughs> so have a great week. Happy knitting.